Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to my channel where we learn about writing code and how to build the web. And if those are things you want to learn more about, please like and subscribe to see future tutorials. And thank you for helping my channel grow. Okay, today we're discussing ways to replace switch statements in our JavaScript code. Let's look at a standard switch statement. And I'll just paste this in. I'll hide the terminal so we can see more of it, but it's big. And I'm defining a variable named extension above, and I'm taking this from a Node.js tutorial I recently completed where we were setting the content type variable. So it was defined with the keyword let. And then as we went through the switch statement, we checked the case of the file extension that came in, and we set the content type. And you can see it's very repetitive. And it's definitely very long. It starts on line four, or you could really say line three with defining content type. And then it doesn't end until line 25. So rather big and bulky. And switch statements can be useful, and we learn about them when we are learning programming fundamentals. But most experienced developers try to avoid them when they can. And some even go so far as to consider them a code smell that could be refactored even though the syntax and functionality of the switch statement is correct. So let's look at a couple of better ways to do this. Okay, we're replacing this full switch statement right here that starts on well, line two with the comment all the way down to line 25. And instead, I'm pasting in an object. And let's call this the extension object, or we could call it a lookup object if we wanted to, because that's exactly what it is. And now we have the case from the switch statement over here on the left. They would be the keys in the object. And then on the right, we have the values. And notice how much smaller it is right away. And then we could just console log, and then we can say extension object. And let's go ahead and put in a bracket because I'll use a string. Well, we don't really need the string, I guess. We've got the extension defined above. So let's just put the extension in here. Otherwise, we could put in the string. But if you have a variable defined, that's how we could pull this out. And now we can see what the extension object is. We're looking it up by referencing the key, and then we should get this value in return. So I'm using node here just to launch a terminal and we can see what happens here. Oh, I need to save the file too. So let's go ahead and save and then we'll type node and we'll type test to run this file. And let's look in the console and we got text slash CSS return to the console. So clearly this is much smaller. Even with the blank line on line two, we've got 10 lines of code. We've defined our extension object and we've even defined the extension that we're looking up all in that same amount of space that took over twice as many lines of code before. Now you might ask, what about the default value? Because we also had a text slash HTML value that was the default. Well, what we can do when we reference this in our code is just put in the or, and then we can put in the default value, like text slash HTML. Now what could happen here? What if there's no file extension? Let's say we have a slash, like we're requesting the root of the page with this value. So no file extension came in, and then this would default to the text HTML. Let's go ahead and save this. We can run the code in the terminal again. And yes, we got text slash HTML in return. Another approach to not using a switch statement is to use a map object as we are now able to with ES6. So let me define a map and I'll call this my map and we'll set this equal to a new map. And then after that, let's go ahead and say my map dot set. And here we can put in the key dot CSS and then the value, which would be text slash CSS. And let's copy that down again. And we can do it with another one. Say we had JSON, and then this would be application slash JSON. And you can do that for each key pair value. Well, I need to type JSON correctly. There we go. And after you have created your map and set all of the values, then you can once again reference it in a similar way. So I'll just type a new console log statement here and I'll say console log my map and then dot get. And now we can pass in the extension value and we should get that same value. So let's go ahead and save and run the file once again in the terminal. 
And oh yeah, I set the extension to slash instead of the .css. If this was .css, we'd get that value back. So let me change that real quick and run it again in the terminal. And now we've got the text slash CSS. So how would we get a default value using a map? Well, it would be the same way. So we could either get that value or deliver the default value of text slash HTML. So I'll save that, change this back to a slash, save the file and run it in the terminal again. And we've got text slash HTML. So these are two great ways to replace switch statements in your code if you're matching up key value pairs. And that's essentially what you're doing with a switch statement, unless you're doing more things inside of that switch statement. And then there's other things you may want to refactor. And we can go into detail on that sometime as well. But right now, what you need to remember besides matching the key value pairs is to use that OR statement, the OR operator actually, and then deliver the default value if this returns an undefined value. Now that we've talked about replacing switch statements with both lookup objects and map objects, let's take a quick look at the MDN web docs. And they have a great comparison here for objects versus maps. And this chart really goes through some highlights. So you'll know when to use each. And I'll just go over some of the key factors in that. And one is a maps keys can be any value. And that includes functions, other objects, or any primitive. But the keys of an object must be a string or a symbol. Another is a map object has a size property. And you'd have to determine that manually with a lookup object. Iteration, a map object is iterable. So you can iterate over the different keys and values in the map object. Performance is also considered to be better uh, many times with a map object. And there is no native support for serialization or parsing. And that's what you might be used to doing with an object when you use JSON parse and JSON stringify. Those are just some of the highlights. I'm going to link to this page for you in the description below so you can check out more about map and compare that to using a lookup object. Many times I use a lookup object when I just have a small set of data like you saw in this tutorial. If I'm working with a larger set or something I need to iterate over, I might consider using a map. If you're interested in learning more about JavaScript and other web development languages, libraries, and frameworks, check out my channel where I have playlists for learning JavaScript, React, and much more. And if this video has helped you out, please like and subscribe. Doing both of those things helps my channel grow, so thank you. Let's write more code together very soon.